why HCG is better than gonadorelin or maybe just more info about gonadorelin um, for all the guys stuck using using it because our clinics switched so what's your guys opinion i have none this is the trt and hormone optimization youtube channel and if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic consider subscribing hit that notification bell and you'll be on your way I'll address it first, uh, just okay. to because I think you have more experience with it. I know the mechanism. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it as a two part question. Uh, part one is gonna be availability of HCG. I want to clarify the whole HCG is no longer around thing. It was not banned by the FDA. It was reclassified. It used to be something where if you had like um, like 50 amino acids, it was classified as a, as a protein and now they knocked it to 40 or some along those lines. Where now HCG is considered a biologic, so it's just classified differently by the FDA. So now the drug manufacturers or compounders have to address the production of HCG differently than before. Before it was a peptide and it's no longer a peptide. So in order to produce or manufacture or compound a medication that is now classified as a different group, the pharmacy must be licensed to compound the medications of that group. My understanding from speaking with a few pharmacy owners is that in order to compound biologics, you must have a biologic license and certain equipment and certain sterility testing. Uh, and this was nothing more than a push to sell more Pregnol, which is the name brand of HCG. I believe Jordan uh, Merck is, is the producer of Pregnol uh, and it's used as a fertility drug. Pre vial of Pregnol is gonna cost you about three times the, uh, the cost of HCG. So because HCG became popular and prevalent as a result of TRT uh, supplementation alongside, uh, they felt that Pregnol is being impacted and naturally the lobby said, well, we can't ban it, but we can reclassify it and by that way we can sort of ban it. So pharmacies are still making it so long as they have a biologic license. Now, if your clinic does not have an account with a pharmacy that, that, that has a very expensive biologic license, they're going to tell you HCG is no longer available. It is available. We deliver it daily to patients through my clinics and it is just a matter of them going to the right channels. That out of the way, the difference from a medical perspective between gonadorelin and and HCG. So gonadorelin, from my research, and I haven't experienced it with patients because we still use HCG, is it is a step above HCG when it comes to the chain of command, okay, of where do we address um, the production of testosterone. So if we think of the master gland in the HPTA or the endocrine system for that matter, it's the hypothalamus. And then below the hypothalamus, you have its assistant, which is the control panel. And that is going to be the pituitary or interior pituitary in the case of the HPTA. And then from there, we go on to the testicles. So when the hypothalamus releases a gonadotropin releasing hormone known as GNRH, that then signals your pituitary gland to go ahead and produce luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, which then act on the testicles, which is the actual factory of the process. HCG is an analog. Analog simply means a mimicker of LH or luteinizing hormone. So when we're administering HCG, we are telling the testicles, go ahead and produce testosterone and the pituitary no longer has to function with the LH release. And in turn, the hypothalamus no longer has to release GNRH. When we take an in, we are essentially mimicking GNRH because it's a GNRH analog, which then hits the pituitary and tells the pituitary, go ahead and produce LH and then in turn go down to the testicles for testosterone. Here's the problem. When a man has secondary hypogonadism, not tertiary, not primary, secondary, the failure is at the pituitary level. This means the pituitary gland does not secrete sufficient levels of LH, even though it is being stimulated by the hypothalamus. How do we know it's being stimulated? Because the low T will not shut off that loop, yet the LH is insufficient. So gonadorelin is only going to ask the pituitary to do a job that it's already failing at doing. So guys with secondary hypogonadism are not going to benefit from gonadorelin in the same way as they will with HCG. And guys that don't have secondary but have primary hypogonadism are not going to benefit from either one because the testicles have already failed. So for me to take a step from the failing point and go backwards, everything behind that line is no longer going to be acting in the way that you expect of it. So I'm not going to say gonadorelin is not better than nothing. I'm just going to say that to me, it's not a replacement for HCG 
because of the mechanism of action being slightly different. So if you have anything to add to that. I totally agree. <clears throat> um, I mean, we do know sometimes you can push those pathways if you overwhelm them with that medicine, right? You might get a little bit extra out of it, even if the pituitary is kind of, we won't say failed, but on the, it's not running up to speed. So you might get a little push, but um, I agree with you. I don't see the, the reasoning behind it. The only thing I could see is if maybe if you had completely normal function, your guys who are just taking testosterone that didn't have the failure, right? Like they're just taking it, then you might get the benefit of it. Um, but yeah, if you actually have secondary or primary or combo, it's not a great option. So, mm -hmm. yep. Hey, thanks for watching. And now click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.